Hey everybody, how's it going, baby boo? <laughs> All right, well, we're back. It's Monday morning, and we're here to talk about some stuff. Okay. Um, all right. I was, you know what? Today we're just going to talk about what's going on in the car world. Um, and less so, uh, well, I don't know. It's not really exactly what everything that's going on, but I'm literally just going to start, uh, discussing news headlines that I see. Um, I see a lot of these all the time, but you know, I figure I figured I'd take a shot at, uh, discussing some of these. I'm just going to scroll down. I just have a page in front of me actually on the Google homepage. Um, and I'm just going to sc start scrolling down. I'm not going to click on any of these, but I'm just going to start scrolling down, uh, the list of topics and I'm just going to discuss them. Uh, so, okay. The top one I see is, um, about a, the first one I see, we're, we're getting right into it. The first one I see is, uh, if you, if, whether why, or no, let's get some words out here, uh, why it would be a good idea to buy a car now. Um, Specifically now, I'm, I assume, I'm assuming because of, um, like in, I'm guessing in North America and stuff because of, well, like actually, no, I guess globally, um, because of the whole, you know, virus pandemic thing, um, and how that kind of plays into, uh, the customer's hand, the consumer's hand for buying a car. Um, I think that one's pretty simple to explain. I think it's mostly just to do with the fact that, uh, dealerships have to, um, shift units. They got to, they got to sell, uh, at the end of the month, they got to meet a quota. And, uh, I was, I guess it's just, uh, I, I guess people are more hesitant to go out and buy stuff in person, especially things like a car. Cause that's a pretty big purchase. So maybe the fact that, um, people just weren't buying for a long time. So now they've, they've been forced to either, uh, drop the prices pretty drastically, or maybe to, um, or maybe they're, it's just incentive. Uh, hmm, let me just go. I cannot speak today. Um, just incentive for, uh, for them to drop the, or sorry, I should say incentive for the customer, um, to, is that the right word? No. Uh, it, well, basically what I'm trying to say is it gives the customer, um, the upper hand in trying to make negotiations. Cause usually, um, dealerships can be pretty stiff about what price they want to sell the car at, even if they, well, 90, 99% of the time they totally can, um, they can sell you the car for, for, for less. Um, but you know, obviously they would do their best not to. Um, but yeah, I think, I think for that reason, um, because they're so desperate to sell, uh, you could probably haggle them a little longer or, well, uh, I think you could haggle them. Uh, and I think they'd more easily, uh, What's that saying? Give up the goat or something like that. <laughs> Basically cave into your requests. Maybe well, not cave in, but you know, you'd, they'd have to come to an agreement in order to just sell a car. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that's why. All right, let's move on to the next one. Tesla Model S P100D races a Ferrari F12 with laughable results. Okay. Um, yeah, this whole, uh, this whole electric car versus gas car thing. I don't know. It's starting to get old. I mean, you know, I get it. Electric cars, and don't get me wrong, I I definitely do. Um, I like both sides of the spectrum. Electric cars, uh, they're wonderful, amazing pieces of technology um, to apply to cars. Um, and gas cars, well, everyone love you know everyone loves gas cars. That's like the original. Well, that, yeah, that is the original car. Um, so yeah, this whole electric car versus gas car thing, you know, it's pretty obvious. I mean, just look at the numbers. Obviously, uh, Tesla Model S P one hundred D will outlaunch pretty much any car off the line and for uh probably up to some probably up to like 120 miles per hour i think it'll outrun most cars except for the uh very highest upper echelon so like your um like your hybrid hyper cars like the 918 the p1 the uh the laferrari bugatti chiron uh pugani Pug did i say pugani <laughs> uh pugani uh like the wire of BC or something. Um, but once you get past a certain speed, because the electric motors are limited to, um, a certain top speed, actually, um, uh, if you didn't know, uh, most, well, actually, I, I shouldn't say most, but at least for Tesla's, I think, um, it might've changed since I last read up on it, but I think Tesla, uh, their model S 
their uh the, the highest performance model s's can only go i think like a top like a maximum like one 170 maybe 170 miles per hour um, i'd say most of those hypercars i mentioned before probably easily can crack like 210 miles per hour um but yeah off the line and for a short distance i mean definitely the electric car will beat out pretty much every uh gas powered car um not maybe it'll probably be pretty close between the hybrid hypercars and stuff but i think still in that case it's definitely not um it's it'll it's definitely closer than it would be with just the normal gas car um but yeah i don't know to to say that this is like you know something new something that's uh something that's shocking i don't think it's that shocking to anyone anymore unless you just don't know about uh unless you just don't know much about like teslas and electric sports cars and stuff like that um yeah uh i think for most people it's just uh you know you just it's just the established supercars so uh i don't even know what the word is um my goodness my brain is just not working today uh the established supercar is just it's so you know you you, you automatically think that that should be kind of the benchmark for uh car performance and then you know, you see a four-door sedan that's it's electric car and everyone used to make fun of electric cars and now they're faster than pretty much anything on four wheels so yeah i think that's the only real shock factor but for me personally and i'm pretty sure for most car guys it's not that surprising anymore um okay let's see uh all right there's a bunch of uh non-car related stuff here let me just skip over that ah lexus postpones the 2021 is debut indefinitely um okay i, I to be okay I, I opened this uh this article uh, a couple few minutes ago just before i started this uh this podcast but um so okay so lexus postpones the 2021 is debut so the is in case you don't in case you guys don't know i have a 2014 um is 350 so this is somewhat related to me, I guess. Not really, but <laughs> anyway, just trying to force myself into situations. Anyway, um, 2021 IS debuts postponed. I feel like most, um, I feel like most, uh, release dates around this time have been, uh, adjusted or, uh, postponed or whatever because of, you know, just everything that's going on, uh, whether it be the pandemic or, you know, the social issues that are, you know, rampant right now. Um, but yeah, I guess that's a, I think that's a pretty smart move, I guess. I don't know if that would have uh, changed much. Well, no, I, I think, I think it was the right move for them. <laughs> I mean, they would know better than me, but yeah, I think that's the right move for them to not do that. I'm actually kind of excited to see just looking at this, uh, like the teaser picture they have of the taillights, it, it kind of looks like um, it, it's got like the the light bar that goes all the way across, and it kind of reminds me of like a lot of different cars. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to see. It looks like uh, I don't know for sure, but I think it's a um, it's not just a redesign like it was in was it 2015 and up, I think. Um, but I think it's an actual uh, like full redes or is it redesign or no? Did I say redesign? No, sorry. Um, after 2014, they had a new version, uh, but it was only it was only refreshed. It wasn't fully redesigned. So um, I don't know if that's the, I don't know if that's the right word, but you know what I mean. Like fully uh, from the ground, like fully um, newly designed from the ground up is what I'm trying to say. But uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure this one is. Um, I'm pretty sure this one is going to be new from the ground up. So I'm kind of ex I'm pretty excited to see what they come out with for that, and I hope. I hope they come out with an ISF so that I have something to buy when I'm older um, as my daily. <laughs> That'd be pretty awesome, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I should probably... Oh, yeah, I should, let me talk about that for a second. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I actually think the more I think about it, the more I wish that I ended up buying a IS350... Or not IS, ISF from... Uh, when did they start? I think the first year of the ISF was 2008. Uh, five liter V8, 420, 420, no, 400, like 17 horsepower, 300, uh, 70 something pound feet of torque. I think I could be wrong, but, uh, yeah, I, I really, I've always wanted the ISF and hopefully if they come out with one, 
uh, whenever the new one comes out, maybe, uh, maybe that'll be my next, uh, maybe that'll be my next car to buy. <laughs> okay, uh, movies, police, police, coronavirus, IX3 Chinese plant. Da -de -da -de -da, da -de -da -de -da. Honda halts production at some plants after cyber attack. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder what, like, what kind of stuff can you hack into in, at a car factory? Let me think about that. I guess you could, like, I don't know. I guess you could somehow go into their, uh, like, programming and somehow mess that up or maybe... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what, like, if you're a hacker, I don't know what your goal is when you hack a, like, a car production plant. <laughs> like, what do, would you try to, like, misalign one wheel so that every car coming off the line is, like, slightly off? Every car pulls to the right? Is it a guy from, like, uh, from Toyota or something? He's, he, like, Toyota paid a guy to hack Honda or something? <laughs> is, that so, is that what's going on? You never know, man. In this modern age, people, uh, businesses are pretty, uh, the economy is pretty cutthroat. <laughs> okay, let's see. Flying to Germany to complain about your unsafe Mercedes Benz doesn't work. Um, yeah, I feel like that's pretty. Uh, do, are people really doing that? Flying to Germany? I mean, I guess if you're like rich, you don't have to care about that, but I don't like, why would you even take the time to fly to Germany? Like, do you really not have anything better to do? Ah, yes, my con my car comes from this country and it has a problem. Let me uh, fly. It's not even tr like they specifically mentioned flying. So I'm guessing like people from overseas or like from different continents. That's insane. <laughs> I don't know. There, there can't be that many people doing that. There's no way. Besides, nobody, nobody flies. Nobody can fly right now, right? I mean, maybe like a select few people, but <laughs> I don't know. That just sounds ridiculous to me. It's like me flying to Japan because my Lexus IS350 has a, uh, that's like, that's like me flying to Japan because, uh, my like tire light is on. I don't know. <laughs> well, no, actually no, it's different. It's just, this is an unsafe Mercedes Benz. Unsafe. What do you mean unsafe? Is that like, like something's wrong? Like it's, it came, like has a problem with the, I don't know, like the radar system or something? Just how about you don't use it then? <laughs> I don't know. Well, people are going to complain about everything. Um, okay, games, uh, government, government. Cars, ah, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, here's what, blah, 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 blah. This, blah, 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 blah. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, sorry, I got to sneeze here. Uh, uh, oh yes okay so you know let, let's okay let's talk about it. i've been skipping over all these f1 headlines but if any of you follow uh motorsport more specifically formula one uh you know that uh the rate the, the season has been pretty much um postponed up until um is it next month i think it's next month or it's either next month or late this month um they're starting the, or I almost said career. They're starting the uh, season back up again. And oh, where were they first? Uh, Austria and Hungary. Okay, so it looks, I'm guessing, I'm guessing they're starting at Austria and Hungary, it seems like. Um, normally they would have started in Australia uh, around, what was it, like the first, first or second weekend of March. I think it was the first weekend of March. Um, or no, no, it was, a, I think it was the second weekend of March, but yeah, it, they, they did qualifying, which is the day right before the very first race. Um, they did qualifying on Saturday, but between Saturday and Sunday morning before the race started, uh, everything just kind of stopped. And then, um, we haven't really heard much since. And then recently, I think last week or so, or last week or maybe a couple weeks ago, they officially uh, released the uh, the uh, revised schedule for this year. So 
I, I really don't know how it's going to go. They're double stacking some places. Like I think, uh, uh, I think the UK is getting two races, I believe, back to back weekends. Um, so yeah, I don't know how that's going to go. That's going to be, it's going to be an interesting season for sure. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is the first time they've had to do anything like this where they pretty much had to hold off for like a season for half the year. So, uh, this is all new for them, obviously. And this is new for us too. But, uh, you know, that goes without saying that that was uh, the, uh, every, in everyone's best interest and for the safety of everyone. So, yeah, I mean, this year's been really weird for F1. <laughs> um, a lot of driver swaps. Uh, Ricardo is going from Renault to McLaren, which is a very interesting move to me. But I guess it's uh, it's kind of logical, I guess. Um, it sort of makes sense. But. Uh, Carlos Sainz, Sainz, the Spanish driver is going from McLaren to Ferrari after, uh, after Vettel says he's leaving Ferrari after this year. Um, that was probably the biggest news to come out of this year, uh, so far, as far as, um, drivers and, uh, teams and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think that was the biggest, that was probably the biggest talking point for a while and still is now because I don't think he has signed any contract with any other team yet. Uh, and nobody really knows if he's going to retire or not. Uh, ho everyone's hoping that he doesn't. I, I haven't seen a single comment on any, uh, like Instagram post or like YouTube, uh, like F1 YouTube video or F1 media, anything that, that says, you know, Oh, I'm glad he's retiring or, you know, it's time he retired. I've never, I haven't seen a single one of those. Uh, granted, it might just be people not saying it. Um, but, oh, excuse me, I had to burp there. Um, but it seems like everyone pretty much uniformly, he's a unif no, unanimously, <laughs> unanimously wants him to stay, which uh, I would agree with. I hope he doesn't leave the sport just yet because it seems like he still has a lot to offer. He's made a lot of mistakes. And as a Ferrari fan myself, uh, Trust me, it's painstaking, and I've probably cried at least twice about it. Uh, but yeah, um, but yeah, a lot of interesting things happening in F1 this year. Okay, let's see. Oh, <clears throat> gosh, I got something crazy in my throat. Ah, <coughs> uh, okay. Racing, uh, blah, 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 I just finished. Wow, warm out. 2020, ah, 2021 Subaru Crosstrek gifted with Forrester engine, new sport trim. Hmm, interesting. I thought they always had the same engine. <laughs> the Crosstrek and the Forrester. Yeah, I thought they always had the same engine. I don't know, maybe it's, uh, Huh, yeah, that's weird. Anyway, uh, something else. How to prepare the 2020. Oh, no. Need for, how Need for Speed can compete with Forza. Screen land. Hmm. Uh, in my opinion, Need for Speed, uh, uh, I don't think it should compete with Forza. I think they both have uh, different things to offer. Um, I mean, on surface level, uh, those two games, uh, their franchises, I should say, are very similar but uh i think if you've played the games you know that um playing them can feel pretty different um need for speed i think has a more uh wider appeal i want to say um and i think forza is more for the for like the car enthusiast uh, I could be wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's the exact same. I haven't played Need for Speed in a long time, but from what I do remember and from what I've heard some people say, uh, Need for Speed and Forza aren't, ex aren't, um, aren't too like deathly similar. I mean, the concept is pretty much the same, but, uh, the stories are different. The atmospheres are both different. Um, and, yeah, the mechanics can be different, but other than that, I think, I don't think it's uh, whether you have to choose between one or two. I think you can enjoy them both, um, respectively. Uh, Chevrolet Camaro wagon looks like family fun. Okay, this is news to me. Uh, 
Chevy, Cam Chevy, Chevy Camaro wagon. That would be really, uh, that would be really intriguing, actually. Um, yeah, because if you know me, you know that I love my fast, my, uh, my fast wagons. Uh, I don't know anyone who doesn't, let's be real. Um, wow, that'd be cool. Chevy, I say, what would that, wouldn't that just be the CTSV wagon? Like from back in the day, wouldn't it just be, uh, pretty much a version of that. I mean, I'm not complaining, but uh, I mean, if anything, I wish they still had the CTSV wagon. Um, but yeah, wow, that'd be pretty cool. That would probably be the only Chevy that I would buy. <laughs> Actually, the only General Motors car that I would buy. Yeah. Let me think about that for a second. Um, yeah, I mean, at least for brand new, I think <laughs> I think that's the only one I would take. Uh, let's see. Are we getting Eurus still in France? Mm -hmm. Twenty twenty Maserati Levante Trofeo. You guys know about that car? That thing is uh, that thing is pretty crazy. I think it's what what is it like five hundred something horsepower, uh, like crossover SUV kind of thing. Um, yeah, that thing is crazy. Uh, I haven't I've yet to see. A Levante Trofeo on the road. I've seen, I saw one at a show. Uh, was it earlier this year or was it last year? I think it was earlier this year. Anyway, we saw one earlier, uh, at some point and it looked pretty good. Uh, it looks, it might look kind of tacky when you first look at it, but it, I don't know. It kind of grows on you. At least it did for me. Honda fuel pump issue prompts recall. Civic Type R Acura NSX also affected. Ooh, that sucks. Honda recalls 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 over 1.4 million vehicles worldwide due to fuel pump issue. Gee, that's gonna cost them some money, isn't it? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, what else do we got? What else do we got? Should the Bugatti Royale SUV be built? Huh. Bugatti Royale SUV. That's an interesting one. Uh, hmm. What do you guys think? Should should there be a Bugatti SUV? I mean, Lamborghini made a Urus SUV, so uh, I don't know. It seems like everyone that's the route that everyone's going. Aston Martin has the new DBX. Uh, Maserati we just talked about has a. Uh, a super performance SUV in the Levante Trofeo. Uh, Alfa Romeo's got a Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Uh, who else? Bentley's had the Bentayga for a while. I mean, I wouldn't call that a performance SUV, but uh, by all means, it's still very fast. Uh, the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, uh, again, not a performance SUV, but just the fact that that company made an SUV. Um, the, Volkswagen, the Volkswagen company has had uh, a history of making uh, pretty out there kind of SUVs. So I wouldn't be too surprised if they do put this thing in production. I mean, just like for the, because uh, Bugatti is under Volkswagen, if you didn't know. Oh, excuse me. All the burps are coming out today. Um, because Bugatti is under SUV or because Bugatti is under VW um, and VW has a lot of actually, yeah, they, they, I mean, they own Lamborghini, they own well, VW, obviously Audi, uh, Porsche. That's a big one I forgot to mention. Um, and in those four companies alone, I mean, they have a lot of performance SUVs. So, uh, to add a Bugatti to the mix, I don't think would be a terrible idea. I mean, I don't think you're going to offend anybody by doing that or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm open to the idea, I guess, uh, It'll be interesting to see. I assume that's going to end up being like the world's fastest SUV or whatever, which will be, uh, which will be an interesting, uh, result. But yeah, I'd love to see where they go with that. If they do decide to take that on, would it have a W16 quad turbo like the Veyron? Would it just have a, maybe it would have like a bespoke V12? Uh, maybe you have a V10 even like the Lamborghini V10. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That'd be cool to see. Uh, the one thing I don't want to see is that it has like a turbo V8 because that would just be, I think that'd just be uninspired. I think they got to go really, they got to go nuts with this thing in order for it to, 
to work for me at least. <laughs> I say that like I'm one of the people that are going to buy it, but <laughs> let's be real. When that thing comes out, it's going to be at least, what, $2 million, $3 million. And if it isn't initially, it's going to end up costing that much. I can tell you that. Okay. Ah, Forza Motorsport 8 leaks and new features. Okay, so going back to Forza, I guess. Uh, Motorsport 8 is coming out soon, uh, apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't really play the Motorsport games that much. I, if anything, I play the Horizon games, and even that, I don't really play too much right now. So, uh, Motorsport 8. I wonder how amazing the graphics are going to be in Motorsport 8. Um, I assume they're really going to take it up a notch this time. Uh, not that they didn't in Motorsport 7, but uh, it, it'll be inter it's going to be cool to see for sure. Yeah, I wonder what the cover car is going to be, because I think for the seventh one, it was the 911 GT2 RS. For the sixth, it was the Ford GT. For the fifth, I don't remember. Was it the Viper? No, no, that was Horizon 1, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I wonder what it's going to be. Maybe it'll be, uh, well, they had the Ferrari on Forza 4. Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe, uh, uh, an Audi? I don't know. Well, they haven't really had any new cars come out recently, so. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Let's see. Model 3 performance blow away. Huh. Taycan. For us, interesting. Uh, let's see, what other what other stuff do we got here? Uh, Huracan Evo M5 facelift. Ah, oh yes, let's talk about M5s or M5. Let's talk about BMW for a second uh, while we have a couple minutes left here. Um, BMW grills, <laughs> they're starting to get pretty ridiculous. I don't know if you saw the concept for the new. Was it five series or something like that? Um, with the huge, huge kidney grills. I mean, if you look at the X7, their brand, their new SUV, that thing, I think, kind of started the whole joke about the kidney grills becoming ginormous and starting to look like pig snouts, which by the way, they totally do. <laughs> um, so for them to go any bigger than that, at least like, like the ones that we saw from the pictures, I think that would be a very, very weird, uh, choice um i don't know if they're just trying to be well not, not really controversial but i don't know if they're just trying to stir the pot so to say um to uh just to i guess get people talking about it maybe that's maybe that's what their goal was and they're not they don't even plan on actually implementing that into the new car but yeah hopefully they don't i mean that would be perfectly fine by me and i'm sure everyone else who wants to buy a bmw <laughs> All right, so I just refreshed the page because I hit the bottom. So now I gotta, I gotta go all the way back up. Ah, uh, oh yeah. I don't know how long has this. I don't know how long this has been a thing, but I think this is gonna be the last thing I talk about. But I don't know how long this has been a thing. But the Porsche Cayenne, which is an, which is another one of those uh, super fast SUVs, uh, has come out with a coupe version or a coupe version, like the X6 or the GLC from Mercedes. Uh, it looks better than those, both of them, in my opinion, but I still think they shouldn't have done it. <laughs> I don't know. I guess if there's a market for it, you gotta, you gotta tend to that market. That's just business. And that's economy, that's economic tips from your host, uh, professor stockbroker Mike. <laughs> I don't know. That was just a bunch of verbal garbage I spewed out. Anyway. Uh, we're nearing half an hour, so uh, that's going to end it right there. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me for the last 30 or so minutes. Uh, yeah, and I hope you have a nice couple, a good couple of few days until, good couple of few days, good couple of days until next video comes out. And thank you for listening or watching, uh, probably listening. I don't think anyone wants to watch this. So uh, yeah, uh, take care, guys. Stay safe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>